Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new installment of the Reviews Roundup where I go over uh, albums, EPs, mixtapes, whatever from the past month that I wanted to talk about and review and rate, and that is them now for the month of October 2023. I'm a little behind, but I will get there indeed, so let's hop into it. First up, we've got Arl Garim with Play. First of all, this record is structured in such a way that it's literally three separate EPs in one. You've got Apex off the top, uh, which is a more standard cookie-cutter trap project with very few spoken words. Uh, of the three, this is probably my weakest section, I think, personally. Uh, Grid is the second part and by far the strongest, bringing in vocalists or production features for every single track. Uh, these are stylistically some of the best tracks, I think. Um, but yeah, with the slew of features, it also means it's much more uh, like differing of a section here. It just has a little bit more, uh, yeah, different subgenres all throughout this uh, second installment. And the final one, Rush, is a pure garage style section uh, with Arl Grimes' best mixing, I think, of the whole project. Uh, ultimately, it's a strange record, but one with a lot of highlights, and I will give it a Bowtied 7. Then we've got Darby with the Crush EP. Darby's Crush is a lively, jumpy house project that just happens to be some of his best production yet. This EP is a quick little project, but it's just filled to the brim with life and energy, and it will score Bowtied 7. Then we've got Former Hero Means to an End. Uh, and with this record, Former Hero comes to its conclusion. I have no doubt that this record means a lot to Former Hero, and there's definitely some thought-provoking production on this album, but I'm not sure it translated a ton over for me personally. Uh, this LP is for sure a front-to-back listen, as the real kind of singles um, have been greatly enhanced by the, the cast of supporting tracks. And I will give it a Bowtied 6. And then we've got Grizz with the uh, Ouroboros, I want to say. Uh, it's hard not to love what Grizz puts out, and this is the kind of last bit of EP or project of his um, as he's going on an indefinite hiatus here, sadly. But yeah, it's a blending of brass and instrumentation and dubstep synths um, that are like a one-two combo that always tends to work for Grizz. Um, this is a pretty stellar project to like go out on uh, as Grizz takes that hiatus, but uh, this is definitely... Um, it, it feels like a mini like best of... EP. It, it's short and sweet, but I think it does the job quite well. We'll score about tied seven. Then we got Morte with the Occult Lullaby EP. This is, wow, a harrowingly beautiful EP uh, wrapped in a haunting atmosphere and sinister tones. Occult Lullaby is um, exactly its namesake. Uh, this may be one of the best rhythm projects I have heard. Morte finds a seemingly impossible balance between the emptiness that actually comes with rhythm, with rhythm, I should say, uh, and the beauty of a child's lullaby. And this will score about tied eight. Then we've got Heritage, the EP, or sorry, the Epic EP. Uh, the most generic bro step with some lackluster mixing. Heritage tried to make the EP feel epic, but the whole project just ended up feeling a little empty and without purpose. And it'll score it a bow tied four. Then we got Quadeca's Scrapyard 1. Uh, Quadeca be begins his series of scrapped tracks with a sample or a simple two track EP that is stylistically a melding of his YouTube rap days and his masterpiece that was I Didn't Mean to Haunt You that came out this past year uh, or last year, I should say. Uh, these tracks sound like the beginning of a new era for Quadeca sound, and I enjoy it. It'll score about tied seven. Then we got A5 with Bridges Between. Uh, this may very well be A5's best yet. For a decade and a half now, A5 has been hailed as the king of dubstep. His production quality and sound design have yet to be challenged, and he continually puts out the best melodic dubstep in the industry. Uh, the one thing A5 had seldom ventured into, though, was the more commercial territory until this record, Bridges Between, which literally bridges... AU5's more niche melodic soundscapes and the appeal of more commercial tunes in that uh, melodic area. But uh, yeah, this is the most, like this is the melodic dubstep lover's dream, I would say. Uh, it's just incredible for, if you love this kind of sound. Um, it may not be the flashiest of projects, but my goodness, it will be next to impossible for anyone to top this. It'll score about tied eight. I got Boy Genius with the rest, uh, definitely the extras that didn't make it onto the record, uh, but these four tracks are still some beautiful songwriting and, and instrumentation. Pretty simple. I will give it a Bowtied 7. We got Daniel Levi with 1402. Daniel Levi's debut LP is a fairly generic electropop record with a fair amount of acoustic instrumentation. Sadly, it does feel like the album is simultaneously trying to hit it big with safe commercial sounds, yet trying to be unique with niche multi-movement transitions. Um, there just isn't a ton on this record to keep me truly engaged. It will score Bowtied 5. 
We got G. Jones with Paths. Uh, G. Jones has been a staple in the weird experimental niche of EDM. And while this record still has its wonkiness, it's easily his most approachable album to date. Uh, with a predominantly hybrid trap focused style, Jones dips and dives through a beautiful soundscape, uh, a far cry from his usual wickedness that he has in his uh, production style. It's a surprisingly serene album, yet true to the still chaos that is G. Jones. And we'll give it a bowtie seven. Then we got Medusa with Medusa. Look at that. Uh, exactly what I expected from the debut Medusa album. Um, album. All their top charting tracks together, and that's pretty much it. Uh, in fact, this record is actually split into two parts. The first half being just their straight up top charting tracks, all slap house also. Uh, well, the second half is just their kind of big room house tunes, just all their big room house tracks. Um, as a collective, the whole thing is generic, boring, and every song sounds exactly like the last one. It will score Bowtide 4. We got Troy Sivan with something to give each other. Uh, Troy Sivan, something to give each other, is by far his most mature and polished record to date. Embracing his sexuality as the forefront of the record, uh, that theme is conveyed through both lyrics and sound design in a way that feels like a very completed story, but one that still is being continually written onto. And we'll give it a bow tied seven. We have Vorso with Holonomi. Uh, Vorso's debut album here is a meaty boy. Um, at a touch over the 90 minute mark, this record is jam packed with some groovy drum and bass tunes and neurofunk uh, tracks as well. But I think it's a bit of a, an, an exhaustive track list. At over 90 minutes, the continuous nature of the project is neat and impressive for the runtime, but there hits a point where the majority of the track list just becomes a little monotonous, I would say, and I will give it a bow tied seven. Then we've got Heckler with Heck Season. Uh, I'm honestly just confused. Uh, this EP is all over the place, um, but what it's consistent in is being boring. Uh, the most common melody used throughout the majority of the track is just the most basic distorted synth beat. And yeah, was not a fan. I'll give it a Bowtide 3. Then we've got Emanu with Paradise. Uh, Emanu continues to uh, pump out some of the best sounding well-mixed drum and bass tunes out there. This EP, this EP may not be um, the craziest of highlights uh, in terms of the Unfold LP and didn't quite have all those incredible singles that I think the uh, last LP did, but um, it's still a great project. Uh, I do think that the last three tracks packed maybe a little bit more of a punch and were a little bit more notable. I think this would have easily been contender for EP of the year, but still really solid and I will give it a Bowtide 8. Then we got ISO uh, or ISOXO with Kids Gone Mad. Uh, ISOXO's uh, debut solo project is exactly what we've been waiting for a beautiful blend of hybrid trap and underground tones. Kids Gone Mad is a marvelous record with banger after banger. Uh, this project is truly a testament to the impact that Skrillex has had in 2023. And while I wouldn't go as far as to say that this is like better than Quest for Fire, it's awfully close. Uh, if this is the new generation of trap music, we might be in for the new coming of a golden age. Uh, and with that, I will give it a bow tied eight. Then we got the Chainsmokers with Summertime Friends. Uh, from the first breath of this record, I knew the Chainsmokers were in trouble. Uh, obviously, the duo hasn't been received well by those who actually care about music, uh, <laughs> as they just produce some of the blandest vanilla boring dance pop. But like, what even is their career trajectory at this point. I don't really get it. When your diehard fans think this is mid, you are in deep trouble. Uh, the Chainsmokers are in desperate need of a remodeling of their sound and style. This will score Bowtide 2. Then we got Antagonizer with Omniviolence. Antagonizer is the group duo of Away and Crywolf. Uh, welcome to the harrowing world of post-EDM, as they call it. Uh, Away and Crywolf team up for a beautifully sinister EP, stylistically reaching beyond our current trends and production styles into an unknown future. Everything about this project is brilliant. The writing, mixing, production, it, it all comes together into one very well-polished experience. And let's score Bowtide 8. Then we've got Caster with Forbidden Arts. Uh, Caster's quickly solidifying himself as one of the better producers in the drum step game. Uh, primarily taking a cinematic approach to this production, Forbidden Arts is an exploration of haunting drum step with a slew of other EDM subgenres sprinkled throughout. And I'll give it a Bowtide 7. We've got Black Tiger Sex Machine with Portals. Um, this is a pretty strange record for me. There are moments uh, of like really powerful and enjoyable production and others that I just can only describe as cringe. Um, in the end, I think the album is just inconsistent. Uh, and yeah, with inconsistent in its theme, production and mixing. And yeah, not it was a weird one. I will give it a Bowtide 5. Then we got Butte Noise with Beyond Ape, a uh, very impressive EP from Butte Noise here, approaching this project from a very like futuristic rhythm angle, I would say. Uh, if this was the direction that rhythm took as a collective, I would be way more thrilled about the genre than I currently am. But um, yeah, 
Carve that path, Butte. Let's hear more of this. <laughs> I will give this a bow tied seven. Then we got Infect with Veggie Friends. Uh, well, Infect's music, particularly the rhythm side, isn't really my style. I did find some appreciation for this EP, um, which I think could have easily been his debut album, but maybe just because it's too meme I didn't want to go with that. But uh, speaking of which, it's got the memes, it's got the bangers, and I know there is a devout group of people uh, who find this to be the rhythm bible uh, of anything. Uh, I can see myself revisiting this, hopefully, uh, with a more acquired taste in the future, but for now, I'll give it a bow tied six. We got Cascade with Redux 006, uh, just a hit list of classic sounding Cascade tunes for the latest Redux installment. Um, nothing too out of the norm from Cascade here, but in this case, I think that's a good thing. And I will give it a bow tied seven. Then penultimately, we've got Shallow with In Touch. Uh, while this record is a relaxing atmospheric house LP, I feel like the production throughout was just a bit too linear. Uh, with a jittery house production and emphasis on a melancholy vocal delivery, the album does tend to feel like it drags in some areas. The overall tone of the record is really great, but it just never was really expanded upon. And I'll give it a bow tied six. And finally, we've got Quadeca with Scrapyard 2. Quadeca hits us with a new trio of um, cut tracks from the last LP, we're assuming, uh, honing more in on this new kind of glitch pop aesthetic. Uh, crazy to think that this is uh, <laughs> some scrap stuff because this scrap stuff uh, is is better than most people's right regular stuff. And we'll give it a bow tied seven. But let me know what you think of any and all of these albums, EPs, whatever, in the comment section below. Other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.